So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the printer. So it is quite large, which it does have a build volume of 172 millimeters wide, 102 deep, and 160 tall is quite reasonable. We do have a 7.9 inch mono LCD 4K screen that projects the images for the curing. Quite large 5 inch touchscreen display. We got a couple USB ports. So the fascia here is kind of like a shiny plastic and then the rest of the body is like a matte plastic. This piece here is metal and that's where the screen mounts and probably everything else. To this side we have some venting also the same on the other side. Looking at the back, we got more venting, the manufacturing sticker, input power port. It is fused with an on and off switch. And this is where we're gonna plug in our cord. And if you guys notice over here, we have a carbon filter with a fan that helps eliminate the smells. And look how thick this channel is here, guys. And this is an aluminum C channel. And if we go back here to the front, you guys can see we got those linear bearings with the rails and an interesting looking lead screw that's more fine and precise looks like. But yeah, if you've seen a resin printer before, this is not going to be anything too unusual. And honestly, I really do like, and by the way, we do have a little QR code on top, how this cover looks on this printer. Quite different than what we're used to, which is more like yellowy, orange, red, but now we have blue from Creality. So let's go ahead and power it on. And it does take a little while here to boot up. Oh, look at that little logo there. It's a little Creality guy. And looks like we got some kind of welcome screen. Let's go ahead and see what kind of welcome it is. So here we can change our language and then our area, which says international. So if you click on it, you can select the language you want. You guys might not see this so well. And then the area. Okay, so it's either international or Chinese. So yeah, basically we'll leave it the way it is and click next. Okay, so now it wants to connect to Wi-Fi. So if you are going to use the cloud to connect to your printer and move things around, you can go ahead and connect to your local network, which mine does pop up here, but I'm the kind of person that doesn't really like connecting too many things to my Wi-Fi space. So I'm gonna opt to use the USB port here to bring my files in. Now for convenience, the Creality Cloud option is quite nice because you can just control the printer from an app or remote desktop. So yeah, if you are interested in that, but if you're not, you can just just click here on home page on the bottom and it should go to our main menu and we can see print and settings so clicking print is going to read our thumb drive so let's go ahead and click settings so we got cleaning wi-fi print settings update details and other settings let's click on other so we got language and region custom skin and resetting the whole thing so what is custom skin so you can give it some customizations here look like so i do like the way it looks but let's see if we can try to install something different here so it is restarting again. All right, well, I don't really see any difference. So this must have something to do with who knows what that I don't really know, but it's on colorful now. So in any case, we'll leave that the way it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this cover off and let's click on print settings here real quick, printing parameters. And you guys can see everything we can adjust, which is quite impressive. It's quite a few things, very interesting. Z axis movement. So we can either go back to zero or a level. To be honest, a little confusing on what to push. Okay, so yeah, it's just going up right now, which is actually what I wanted it to do. I'll just stop it right there. So the reason I wanted to bring it up, take the blade off, is if we go back here to the main menu, if you click on cleaning, we'll push okay. And that's gonna wide open our screen there and the UV lights are gonna all shine through. So this is good for if you wanna solidify whatever's left in the bed so you can peel it off. A lot of times it's not the best thing to use unless you just, you know, don't need the resin anymore and you wanna solidify whatever's left in there. Cause if you have too thin of a layer, you can get stuck pretty bad and then you can't peel it off that easy. So I guess we have to click it to stop it. Okay, so here we have our Wi-Fi setup. So if you wanna connect to Wi-Fi, you can do it from here. Update. So you can update from the cloud if you're connected or manually update through this other port here or maybe even through the thumb drive. And then we got details, binding Creality Cloud. So here we have a QR code that you can scan in the app so we can automatically connect to this printer, which is really nice and easy to set up. And under other information is all about this printer. But yeah, that's pretty much the basics, guys. So I think for the next part, let's remove this and we're going to use this leveling paper, which also includes the instructions on how to level our build plate. So let's put it back on there. 
And so this paper is great for the spacing, which goes right here. Now we're also gonna need our Allen wrench. And it's gonna be the biggest one, which we'll use to loosen these two bolts on one side and also the other. So once all of them are loose, your build plate should just move around up and down, kind of side to side. And now we're gonna go into print settings, Z axis movement, and we'll click on a leveling. And we're gonna let it do its thing. Looks like it's going all the way up. Okay, so the end stop switch is actually on the top, which is quite interesting. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see it. Yeah, probably not. It's right behind the lead screw over here. So yeah, that's quite interesting that it has to go up to home, I guess. And now it's gonna come down basically to the starting mark. Now make sure your bed is loose, obviously, before you do this, because as you can see, it does compress kind of in there. And so now all we gotta do is just, with the paper being underneath, so we have set the gap, we can just tighten all these little bolts on the side back up. Now I like to put my hand kind of on the plate on both sides while tightening them to make sure it's nice and flat. Not too easy on this one, this is quite large. So we're gonna snug all four of them up. And that basically sets the level on the build plate. This paper, yeah, it does come out quite easy. And you should have a really nice even gap all around the plate. Now, if you think you are not level yet, go ahead and redo this part and kinda, you know, gauge your corners all around, make sure they feel about the same. Now, if they're slightly some difference, that's okay, as long as they're pretty close. Now let's see if we can figure out how to go back up. So if we say back to zero, is that gonna go up? Okay, yeah, so it is gonna go up. So back to zero actually takes it all the way up to the top, which is fine because we're gonna install our tub back in here, which clicks in there quite easily. So yeah guys, as simple as that, we are done with our level. So let's go back to the main menu and grab our thumb drive and we'll plug it in here up front. It does have a little red light that glows. And we'll see if they included any kind of test files here for us to print. It looks like we have a couple things here. Let's see. Cancel. It says something here about cloud online model. Then we got this model here. So it is importing it into the printer, which is quite interesting because if it imports the files, you can actually unplug this after it does that. Okay, so it says that the import failed. Let's try that. Okay, yeah, it's going much faster. And there we go. So it is an owl. It has been imported, so if we unplug this, you guys can see that everything disappeared except for the owl file that we downloaded from the thumb drive. So you don't have to keep the thumb drive in the whole time when you're printing, which is really cool because these things get pretty hot when they're constantly being read off of. And also, it's a lot more reliable when the files go into the printer than printing straight from the card. So yeah, definitely like that feature.